Hello and welcome guys. So in the last video we have completed our model training. So here we are getting validation accuracy as 95.08% and training accuracy as 97.07% which is good. So if you see this entire thing we have completed, we have completed our data pre-processing and then we have understood about these things and at the time of model training we face the problem of overshooting of the loss function. So we have learned how to resolve the loss function and what is these things we have understood these things in a very detailed way and then this is my model architecture and by following all these things at last we are getting this much of accuracy but as I said that accuracy is not enough to evaluate our model and say that our model is performing well so we have to evaluate our model on some other metrics so that's what we are going to do in this video and the upcoming video okay so if you are new to this video then please watch this playlist from beginning so let's give scape m to give markdown and write here model evaluation i'm giving here two hash okay so first of all i am going to evaluate my model performance on training set so i am writing here model evaluation on training set so to perform our model evaluation on training set let's write here model whatever we have defined here this is our model this one so write here model dot use the function of keras model dot evaluate and just pass here your training set training underscore if you so this function return training loss so i am saving training loss in train loss variable and second thing it will return is train accuracy okay whatever accuracy we are getting on training set so these two things it will return if we run this and you will see that it's running on all this 2197 which is exactly number of batches okay so it's running on this batches so if i print this that give me whatever training loss and accuracy i'm getting so you will see here as we execute this we will get our result so we have done our model evaluation let's print this so i'm getting my training loss as this much 0 0.06 and my training accuracy as 98.10 okay to see our model on validation set so what we will do we will copy this entire thing We'll paste here and we'll change this as validation as we have defined our validation set if you go up you will see that this is my validation set and this is my training set so this is what i am going to use there to evaluate our model performance and here we'll change this as val validation loss and validation accuracy let's run this also and same like this we'll print this okay let's run this and print this okay so i want my validation loss and validation accuracy so 0 0.19 is the validation loss and validation accuracy is 95.07 percent so this is what we are getting by evaluating our model so before moving forward what we will do first we will save our model okay saving model so what's the need of saving model because if we want to use this model for future prediction or if we are going to build any web app then we can't run this model every time and use this model because if we are going to fit this model and this fitting will take almost 30 minutes based on your data set if the data set is large then it will take a lot of time okay so you can't run it again and again okay so that's why you have to save this model so that if you want to use this model in future you can directly load and use that model i'm going to use here this function model dot save this model is actually my this variable model which i have defined here this is my sequential model here which i am using so this is my model variable so i am saying that perform this model dot save it will save all the parameters whatever we are getting after this final epoch which is here 10th epoch whatever weights i am getting for each parameter will be saved here and inside this i will pass the location so i am saying in the same hierarchy save this model as trained model dot h5 so earlier we are saving this model in the form of h5 file so let's save this model in h5 file and see what we are getting okay i'm saving this model in h5 file so let's run this so we have saved our model so if you go here in home then you will see that here we are getting train model dot h5 file if you see the size of this file is 89.9 mb if you want to learn more about this then you can visit the documentation of this 
tensor flow save model like this if you search and you will get from here so you will see that how they are saving their model there is multiple ways of saving they are also trying to save uh, saving all the weights a lot of different ways to save this model this is one way of saving this model model dot save if i remove this h5 and say it as like model dot in model dot keras so h5 is one extension to save this model and second extension of the saved model is dot keras let's save like this also and see so i'm saving it as model dot save i'm saying that save this in the file name as train model dot keras okay now let's go here so you will see this train model dot keras another file is being generated and see the size of this it's only 30 mb okay so here if we are going to save this in h5 file then we are getting this much of size of our model but when we are saving this model as model dot keras then the size is being reduced and compressed in just 30 mb now keras extension we will use to save our model this is updated way to save our model so that will be easy for us to store it if we want to transfer it to someone else then we can easily transfer it and it is in a compressed way so we can easily do all these things whatever we do with h5 file the same thing we can do with keras file so we have reduced our h5 file size from 90 mb to 30 mb okay so now for saving our model we will use this extension to save our model okay now what we will do we are going to visualize our history whatever we have stored here if you see after performing this uh, training operation we have stored the history of our model in this training history variable so we will use this variable and we will write as training history dot history if i print this then you will see this training history dot history will generate a dictionary having first key as loss which is your training loss and second key as training accuracy and third key as validation loss and fourth key as validation accuracy so these are four keys of this dictionary and this is generating all the 10 epochs values okay so with respect to each epoch i am getting here whatever is my loss and whatever is my training accuracy and what is my validation loss and what is my validation accuracy so this thing we will use to visualize our training accuracy and validation accuracy so before moving forward let's record this history if we want to visualize it in future then we don't need to perform this training okay that's why i am recording this history because we can't train this model every time it's very time taking process okay so i am recording my model history so let's write here recording history in json i'm recording my history in json format so let's import here import json and use here with open and inside this you have to pass your file name i am giving here training hist dot json and i am using write operation this is a traditional way to write any file in python and i am saying as f okay and here what i am going to do just write here json dot dumb and inside this you have to pass your uh, whatever things you want to store so this thing i, I want to store there so i am writing here training history dot history and second argument i am passing as f i am saying that store whatever is returned by this thing in this f which is your training history dot json okay so once you run this you will get here this training underscore hist dot json inside this if you go then you will see all the things like loss you have this 10 values of loss on each epoch you are getting this much of training loss and this is your training accuracy and this is your validation loss and this is your validation accuracy with respect to each epoch here in training we have used 10 epochs that's why we are getting here 10 values of all this uh, thing okay so we have successfully saved our training history and we have also saved our model now what we will do we will perform our model accuracy visualization so let's create more cells here so let's write here escape m to give markdown so i'm writing here accuracy visualization accuracy visualization here i am defining my epochs so i am i am defining a list of 10 values so i am saying as for i or i in range of 1 to 11 so if we run this and if we 
see the value of our epoch then you will see here we are getting here 10 values here 1 to 10 in a list format because we are going to use this thing in future and let's import here matplotlib so i think we have imported here matplotlib.pyplotsplt so right here plt dot plot and inside this pass first which is your x-axis which is epochs and second thing is your training history dot history history dot history and this thing will return the dictionary so from dictionary what i want from dictionary i want training accuracy so i will use this thing okay so i want the value of this training accuracy key okay so i'm passing this so if we run this here then you will see if i run here and you will see this 10 values so this is what it will return and third argument i am passing as color is equal to red i am giving and fourth argument is label i am saying that it is my training accuracy if i do here plt dot show and you will see okay so we have not closed this quote here so we have closed this quote and if we do now plt dot show you will see our training this is our training accuracy with respect to each epoch so here we have 10 epochs on each epoch this is the variation of our training accuracy same we will do for validation accuracy so let's write here plt dot plot first parameter is your x parameter which is your epochs and second thing is your y values which is here your now we will use this val accuracy if we print here val accuracy then you will see this thing we are getting this is validation accuracy with respect to each epoch so here we will change this value as well accuracy so i am saying that from this training history dot history dictionary retrieve the key values of well accuracy okay and color here i am going to put as blue and label i am going to give here as validation accuracy let's plot it also so if we run this then you will get this thing so this is what is my variation of our validation accuracy it's fluctuating a little bit here but it's above 85 percent okay from here it's flat so this is what we are getting we plot this let's add some labels here plt dot x label you can give here so i am giving here x label as number of epochs and plt dot y label as you can give here accuracy result if we run this here is your accuracy result and here is your number of epochs and we can give here plt dot title also title will show what is this visualization so i am saying that this is a visualization of accuracy result okay if we run again and you will get here visualization of accuracy result this is your y level this is your x level and this is your training accuracy and this is your validation accuracy but we don't have any information which is showing that this is your training accuracy and this is your validation accuracy so for that we will write here plt.legend plt.legend if you run it then you will get here that red is showing that this is your training accuracy visualization and blue is showing that this is your validation accuracy visualization so this plt.legend what it's doing it's taking your whatever level you have defined here it's taking that value as here and it's putting it as here and saying that red is for this level red denoting this level and blue denoting this validation accuracy this level okay so it's actually retrieving this level values and it's mapping with your on this visualization okay so this is what this plt dot legend is doing so we have successfully completed our visualization so let me summarize what we have done in this video so first we will we have evaluated our model on training set and validation set and after applying this model dot evaluate function we are getting the training loss and training accuracy as this and when we are applying this on validation set then we are getting this validation loss and validation accuracy and to save this model we can use h5 format or keras format but if we use h5 format then we have seen that file size increased so to compress our model size 
we have used here model dot keras okay and then we have stored here our training history variable so when we are performing dot history then it's returning this dictionary which is having training loss validation loss and training accuracy validation accuracy and we are saving this uh, training history in a json file so that if we want to use it in future and if we want to perform any data visualization or anything then we can perform by simply reading this json file okay because we can't run this model lining again and again that's why we are saving all the pa train parameters in this keras file and also we are saving all the uh, history part in this json file okay. and then we have done this accuracy visualization by writing this piece of code so that's all for this video next video we will evaluate our model on some other metrics like using precision recall f1 score this thing we will use to evaluate our model and also we will plot a beautiful confusion matrix of that so precision recall is very important in multi-class problems so that will show that how strongly your model is able to classify your image in that class so that's all for this video thank you guys thanks a lot for watching this video